so uh, we move on to the next important topic in uh, the design of a link that is uh, dispersion compensation. So when we talked about uh, link design in one of the case studies, we found that the length of the fiber gets ultimately limited by the uh, rise time offered by the fiber which is corresponding to the intermodal or intramodal dispersion of the fiber. There are uh, three ways to solve the problem. The first way would be to use uh, 13 10 nanometer as the wavelength where the dispersion is uh, almost zero. But the problem with uh, 13 10 nanometer is that the, we know that the loss of the uh, the intrinsic attenuation of silica is uh, very high at 13 10 nanometer. So, for long distance communication, you would anyway prefer to use 15 50 nanometer. The other option would be to use uh, dispersion limited length, which means basically we are saying that uh, uh, do not transmit beyond the, the length that limits basically the dispersion. So, that is not a solution at all because we want to actually transport over long distances. Uh, the third solution is of course, uh, carrying out the dispersion compensation. Now, uh, even though dispersion is the critical uh, limitation in long distance communication, the good thing about dispersion is that we can very well characterize it. We know exactly how uh, the dispersion in the fiber behaves. Uh, we know the we know how to quantify dispersion. So, we can make use of that uh, information to compensate for dispersion. Now, uh, before we go on to dispersion compensation, we will do a quick recap on fiber dispersion. So, chromatic dispersion uh, in single mode fibers uh, uh, leads to uh, we, we specifically say single mode fiber because long haul communications are typically carried out with single mode fibers. So, uh, this leads to pulse broadening and you can uh, this is a picture that you have seen earlier when we uh, talked about uh, dispersion. So, all the colors constituting a pulse starts uh, together or they propagate they are uh, aligned in time there is no chirp or there is no relative, but uh, as it propagates through the fiber and the single mode fiber we have learned in the section related to the fiber that a single mode fiber poses uh, anomalous dispersion or a negative dispersion and negative dispersion would mean that uh, violet travels faster, uh, shorter wavelengths travel faster than the longer wavelengths. So, the long in, in, in as a function of time the longer wavelengths the reddish components appear later whereas, the bluish components appear uh, first. So, this leads to the fact that in the time domain the pulse broadens and this is what we uh, refers, refer to as ISI or intersymbol interference. So, the different wavelengths travel with uh, different speeds and so there is a spread in the arrival time of the pulses and this leads to ISI. Now, we want to quantify this ISI the delta tau uh, properly so that we want to now the, the idea the goal of this session is to find out how to reverse the process okay, to compensate for the process. So, we consider the propagation of a pulse of spectral width delta lambda and now what is this uh, spectral width we are talking about. Uh, in uh, if you just consider a laser or an LED the spectral width is that of the laser or LED. But when you uh, modulate uh, la a laser for instance now mostly we are talking in the context of high speed communication systems it is like 10 gigabits per second and above. So, when you modulate a uh, laser which is of line width or which is of spectral width let us say 0.1 nanometer or of the orders of uh, tens or hundreds of megahertz. If you modulate it with a gigabit per second data rate the spectral width is no more decided by the line width of the laser the spectral width is now decided by the modulation speed okay? because uh, in the time domain uh, let us say the pulse has a width of uh, tau. So, that is what is represented here the width of the uh, pulse in the frequency domain uh, we can calculate by doing a simple Fourier transform. Right? So, depending on the pulse shape you will have a certain uh, spread for the pulse in the frequency domain. It means that the pulse occupies that frequency content delta omega and we know that smaller is uh, tau, shorter is the pulse. Uh, 
wider is the spectral content. So the delta lambda naught we are talking about is the corresponding uh, uh, spectral width in terms of uh, nanometer for a frequency spread corresponding to delta omega. Now if you have uh, your data rates higher, the bit slots become uh, narrower and so the pulse widths become narrower and as the pulse widths become narrow, the spectral content starts increasing. Okay. Now for such a system, the group velocity of the pulse, now the group velocity is the velocity with which the envelope of the pulse uh, propagates, it is not the, uh, so this pulse is modulated on a carrier. Now we are not talking about the uh, phase change of the carrier, we are talking about the uh, speed with which this uh, envelope of the pulse is propagating that is d beta by d omega where beta is the propagation constant and I know that the propagation constant is nothing but omega by c multiplied by n where n becomes uh, n is a function of omega. Uh, n is a refractive index of course experienced by the frequency omega. So this is a simple derivative. So you have uh, if you calculate the derivative of this function. So you can pull out omega uh, 1 over c outside and you have the derivative of uh, omega times n of omega. So you can apply the product rule and you get omega times dn by d omega uh, which is the derivative of this term. Obviously that is the non-zero number because n is a function of omega, it is a function of frequency and uh, plus n of omega times derivative of omega with respect to omega that is 1. Now this term is uh, what we call as the group index Ng and the group index actually uh, represents the fact that the uh, refractive index is also a function of uh, omega. It, it represents the variation, it contains the variation of refractive index with omega. So let us now calculate what is the uh, pulse broadening. Uh, let us quantify the pulse broadening in terms of uh, the dispersion parameter of the fiber. So let us say uh, the pulse of width tau which has a spread, a corresponding spread uh, delta omega in the frequency domain. Let us say this pulse propagates through a fiber of length L. And the point we are trying to make is that the uh, time of uh, taken by the pulse to propagate from one end of the fiber to the other is a function of frequency. Different frequency content takes different times to reach the other end of the fiber. So the dispersion is quantified by the difference between the time taken by the fastest frequency and the slowest moving frequency. So this pulse broadening which is delta t, where delta t represents the time difference between the fast moving frequency and the slow moving uh, frequency is dt by d uh, uh, omega times delta where now t is the transit time. Now the transit time is of course related to the group velocity and the length because the transit time is nothing but length divided by group velocity. We are looking at the envelope of the pulse propagating through the fiber. So this is d by d omega and this time is L divided by pg delta omega. So if I take the derivative of this with respect to omega, it is d by o d omega. L by v g is nothing but L times d beta by d omega because 1 by Vg is d beta by d omega which we have seen earlier times delta omega. Now d beta by d omega let us call this as beta 1 and derivative of beta 1 let us call this as beta 2. This is what we are defining. So beta 2 is the first derivative of uh, beta 1 with respect to omega and beta 1 is nothing but d beta by d omega which is 1 over uh, group velocity what uh, we have. So 1 over Vg is d beta by d omega uh, and the first derivative of that is beta 2. So this is what we are defining. So L times beta 2 times delta omega becomes your pulse broadening. So this is also referred to as the GVD parameter. But earlier we had defined a dispersion parameter D which also defines something similar. We said the pulse spread delta tau, so here delta tau represents again the same thing, the time difference between the fastest and the lowest, lowest frequency. 
we had defined earlier in terms of dispersion parameter and we had defined that it is d times l times delta lambda where this d is a dispersion parameter in picosecond per kilometer nanometer. Both these quantities are representing the same thing. So, there is no harm in equating l beta 2 delta omega and d l delta lambda. So, uh, l, d l delta lambda and l beta 2 delta omega both are representing the same idea except that dispersion parameter is quantified through a uh, wavelength spread whereas beta 2 typically gets quantified with respect to uh, delta omega. So, one is a quantity in the uh, frequency in hertz scale uh, or radian per second scale, the other one is the uh, quantification in terms of uh, wavelength spread, but both represents the same idea of dispersion. So, quickly we can find out what is the relation between d and beta 2, right. Some of the data sheets represent d of a fiber, sometimes you get beta 2 of the fiber, but both are related because from this equation you can calculate d is equal to beta 2 times delta omega by delta lambda. Now, delta omega by delta lambda is a very known, uh, well known relation because omega is 2 pi c by lambda. So, if I take the derivative here, it is 2 pi c 1 by lambda square. So, delta omega by delta lambda, of course, this negative sign indicates that an increase in uh, frequency is actually a decrease in uh, lambda. It is actually indicative of this inverse relation between omega and lambda. So, uh, I can substitute this minus 2 pi c by lambda square here. So, I get d is equal to minus 2 pi c by lambda square times beta 2. This is a very useful relation. Um, d is again both d and beta 2 both quantify dispersion. D is represented in, as I said earlier, picosecond per kilometer nanometer, whereas beta 2 gets represented from here, it is picosecond per meter and frequency is uh, per time, right. So, this means picosecond square per meter. So, beta 2 is represented in picosecond square per meter, whereas D is represented in P. Uh, uh, picosecond per kilometer nanometer. Both represent dispersion. Uh, now that we have quantified the dispersion, uh, we can also uh, verify that, identify that uh, for 1550 nanometer or 1500, uh, in fact for 1550, so this is not uh, 1500, this, this line should correspond to 1550 nanometer. The total dispersion for uh, 1550 nanometer should actually correspond here and this number is about 17 picosecond per kilometer nanometer. Now the spread as I said earlier it could be because of a source if it is very low frequency modulation or for an unmodulated source, but typically when you modulate it fast with uh, data the spread is decided by the modulation speed. So, uh, one can calculate the uh, modulation speed based on the uh, data rate or the symbol rate and from that one can calculate what is the delta tau.